In the last video, we were discussing the adiabatic saturation temperature, and we were talking about this kind of setup with a long channel where we're evaporating water into an airstream, and then when the air gets to the very end, it's at saturation, and we wanted to be able to determine that inlet absolute, absolute humidity ratio along with that final temperature that you could get to, T2. And we got to the point where we did a mass balance and an energy balance, and we got to this equation here describing that setup. And then I went ahead and I, I tried to solve for the initial humidity ratio, and I did that very quickly, and I want to go over that in a little better detail and a little slower with some more time. So let me actually clear, clear that out. And then also show where we can get these different values for this enthalpy and this enthalpy and this enthalpy and also for the absolute humidity ratio at the exit at state 2. So if we were solving for uh, omega 1, so we have that here and here. So let me do some grouping. So omega 1, it's pot times saturated enthalpy of the vapor coming in and this is going to be a subtraction sign and I'm gonna put a 2 subscript here just because we can hopefully assume you could assume whatever temperature you want or you can figure it out but we'll say that this here is also related to this state at the end so we have have that so we've taken care of that term and that term and we want to move everything else onto the other side. So I know I'm going to group a CP term. And we're going to have a positive. I'm going to, T2 is for the air mixture. And we're going to be, this is going on this side, so we're subtracting. And then we're going to also have, so we've taken care of that term and that term. So we're left with the omega 2 terms. So if we have omega-2, the positive would be this one. And the negative would be this one. <clears throat> and one thing you can see here, if these are both at the same temperature, we can say that this is the enthalpy at saturated vapor, this is the enthalpy at saturated liquid. This is sometimes written like this or like this, where all of this is the latent heat uh, vaporization. So this is how much energy it takes to boil, essentially, liquid water to liquid vapor per unit mass. So we can actually replace this term with that value. And then the last thing is to just divide both sides by the term here. So if we do this in total, we have, I'll use lambda for latent heat of vaporization. That's what that is. And that is all over H V one minus H F two. So this this temperature was known, or if we know all these things, we can figure out what these all are. <clears throat> so if we were where what let me grab a table because this will make it a lot easier. Okay, so here is a saturated water table that I have. So for instance, if we are looking at, say, this value and this value. Oh, I lost it. Oh, here we go. And let's say at when it, the vapor came in, it was at 80, or the air came in at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and went to 70. Well. 
HV1 or the enthalpy of the vapor at state 1 would be the enthalpy. So I need to move this over. That is the enthalpy at saturate, so our saturated liquid. Oh, I'm sorry, saturated vapor. Saturated vapor at 80. We could grab this value, 1096.1. And let's say it goes to 70. Well, the enthalpy of the liquid coming in would be 38.08. And for the saturated vapor leaving would be 1091.8. And those terms would be. Ah, would be this term. And actually, where the other term would be the the one in between here. So this HFG or this difference, latent heat of vaporization, at least on my table, would have been at 70. Our second state would have been this right here, 1053. So that's how we can look up those different values. And we also know that this was at a relative humidity of 100%. And we have a relationship with pressure for absolute humidity ratio. And we knew that to be 0 0.622. And this is the partial pressure of the vapor at saturation divided by total pressure minus that same pressure. And so if we know we're at a given, if we are at a given temperature, we can go back to that table I just had and look up the saturated pressure and we can get this value. And so essentially if you know the other things that you don't really know are here but this is an equation that relates all these temperatures and humidities together and so that ends up being very useful and for example we could rearrange this equation to solve for T2 which would be the adiabatic saturation temperature if you're given an air condition where on the inlet you know the temperature and you know what the humidity ratio was coming in you can everything else you can figure out. And so that's how we can get the adiabatic saturation temperature. I may do an example of determining this in the future, but we, for this series, we're going to move on and compare this concept of the adiabatic saturation temperature to the wet bulb temperature, which is normally going to be measured with something called a sling psychrometer. So I hope you'll join me in those videos. See you soon.